Hey YouTube, this is Mike from Nodex, but today we're going to be shooting the NDS 58 and the NDS 55 rear sight on a Ruger American Ranch in 760 by 39 basically the new jungle carbine. So if you've ever wanted a light, fast handling, easy to shoot rifle, deer hunting, a truck gun, hiking, whatever, this is the package you want. No scope, no problem. This gun will shoot into two inches or less at 100 on its own. You put some good iron sights on it, super lightweight, still has fast handling, no big bulky scope. This is the way to go. So this is at 100 yards off the bench with some uh, Wolf Military Classic Full Metal Jacket. Iron sights, not too bad of a group. Somebody with uh, a little bit younger eyes might be able to sharpen that up a bit, but that is a keeper for me. And uh, on to the next segment. Now I'm going to show you how to install the Nodex Spud iron sights on the Ruger American Ranch. This holds true for other models such as the Predator or just the standard American if they have the right barrel diameter and are a short action uh, in order to use our sights. So first thing you want to do obviously is make sure that the weapons are clear. These have been cleared and you're going to want to remove the factory scope rail. You're going to need a number 10 Torx for that. I've already pre-removed three of the four screws. We're going to set that aside. Now, generally I'll clean that off, wipe it up. Uh, you can clean out the holes with a little acetone if you want to and apply some blue Loctite or clear nail polish as a thread locker. You'll notice when you get your NDS 55 that the bag only comes with three screws. The reason that we do this is because we want to have it in a position where when you're working the bolt rapidly, you're not going to scrape your knuckles on the rear sight housing. So the rear portion of the base covers up the fourth hole to the rear. Not to worry, there's plenty of strength here and uh, not gonna cause an issue. Now that I have my screws started, I can go and tighten them. I 
don't have an inch pound setting for you, but I just do them good and snug. Uh, you don't want to go grill on them and strip them out. So whatever you do for your standard scope ring mounting uh, torque specs would probably work fine for this. For the purposes of this, I'm just going to snug them up. All right, now we're going to install the front sight. This particular gun has the early flared or stepped barrel with a 730 diameter down here and a 750 diameter right here. So for this model, we want to use the NDS-58, which has a 750 interior diameter on the sight base. We're going to use that in conjunction with the NDS-60 flash hider. First thing you want to do is remove your thread protector. Put that in the bag with your scope base so you don't lose it. Next, we're going to take the NDS-58 front sight and we're going to want to slip this over the barrel. You can take a small screwdriver like this and, or something like a plastic wedge and just slip this in here real gentle to spread apart this slot right here. You're going to want to loosen those screws up too before you start this. So we're going to slip that over. You do it carefully so you don't scratch up your finish. Once we have that over the step, we're going to install our NDS-60 flash hider. take a small crescent wrench or an appropriately sized wrench and we're going to tighten that down. Next, we're going to slip the front sight back forward over the step and the body of the flash hider. This provides the cylindrical mounting surface needed to mate up with the NDS-58 front sight. I like to spread it open just a little bit, makes it easier to get it on. Next thing you want to do is you want to time up your front sight with your rear rail. Now, if you don't have a Mark I calibrated eyeball, you can flip the gun upside down. First, you probably want to do flip the aperture to the medium, the middle position there. Flip that upside down, and then make sure that the front sight and the ears of the rear sight are both flat and flush on the table. Then you can flip it over. and gently snug up your clamping screws. You want to make sure you're timed up really well, otherwise you're going to have some windage issues on your rear sight. If you find that your windage is off and you have to crank your sight over to the left or the right on the rear, that means that you did not time up your front sight base well enough with your rear sight. There's also two set screws that come down from the top. You're going to want to snug those up. Again, you don't need to go gorilla on them, but you do need to tighten them down good. These have nylon tips on them. After your initial installation, you want to going to go back after a week and snug them up good because the nylon tips on the set screws will take a set. In general terms, I do about two fingers for installation on that. On the main clamping screws, 
You want to clamp those down, down good and tight. Again, don't go crazy on them, but just make sure they're good and snug. And that's basically how we install the NDS 55, NDS 58 front sight, and the NDS 60 flash hider on a 760 by 39 Ruger American Ranch with a stepped barrel. For the NDS 56 model, which fits the tapered 5.56 caliber rifles, you basically are going to loosen up your clamping screw and make sure that the two set screws that come in from the top are all retracted and everything's loose. Then you're going to want to slip this on, snug it up against the taper of the barrel, make sure it's timed properly with your rear sight. Then you can tighten down your clamping screw and the two 10 by 32 set screws which come down from the top. There is a spacer in here to make sure that you do not over tighten the main clamping screw, which could result in cracking of the base. So leave that washer in there and just snug it up gently. And that's basically it for installation. Now I'm going to show you how to adjust the front sight. First, you're going to need an SKS or AK type sight tool. This is a tool I made in the shop, but those tools are easily available from multiple sources on the internet. You don't need the windage adjustment tool, you only need the elevation adjustment tool. Since this is an SKS type front sight, you would install your tool on there and then you would rotate up or down depending on which way you want your point of impact to change. Remember that you always move your front sight the opposite direction that you want the bullets to go. So if your gun is shooting low and you want the bullets to go higher on the target, you would screw your front sight post down. If you want your gun to shoot lower, you would screw your front sight post up. Always do the front sight the opposite direction you want the bullets to go. On the rear sight, we've got an M16A2 style aperture. It has a small aperture, which is about 70 thousandths, and then we have a ghost ring aperture, which is about 200 thousandths. There will be a slight elevation change when you go from the large aperture to the small aperture. You want to zero the rifle with a small aperture at your longest distance. That's going to be your most precise aim and then when you flip it over, that's for close range, fast work, say in tight cover uh, when you're hunting or something of that nature. In general terms, I rarely use it. Um, I typically just use a smaller aperture for most of my shooting. On the rear sight housing, there, on the windage screw here, there is a slot. Do not Put a screwdriver on that. That is not how you adjust windage on these on an M16A1 style rear sight. The way you adjust windage is you take a broken off punch or a cartridge tip, a bullet tip, you depress the detent right here and then you rotate, you press it in, hold it and then rotate either left or right. On the rear sight, you always want to move the same direction you want the bullets to go. And that's a quick tutorial on how to install and adjust the Nodak Spud sights on a Ruger American Ranch rifle. If you have any questions, please call and ask for Mike, 952-942-1909, and I'll do my best to answer your questions. Thank you.